Hey there, I'm Dan Collins with the CUNY Kingsborough Math and Computing Department, and I'd like to welcome you to our lecture series on Starter C++ Programming. So a little bit about me, Dan Collins. I am a full-time lecturer at CUNY Kingsborough in the Math and Computing Department. I have higher degrees in Mathematics and Statistics and Philosophy. Now, prior to my current position, I was a programmer in the video game industry working in C++. And among the companies I was at for a while, one did racing simulations on the PC. We had a NASCAR racing game that was pretty popular. And another did online digital collectibles, games like Magic the Gathering Online, if you know what that is, things like that. Now, about our course, our course is definitely geared to be tutorials for beginners. We are not assuming that you have any prior programming experience. Of course, if you do have prior experience like that, you will have a leg up on the material. What we do assume is that everybody has basic computer literacy. You can find your way around an operating system. You can organize your work into folders intelligently. You can find a file with a particular name or extension when you need to, things like that. At Kingsborough, we're Windows oriented. So you're gonna see me working on a Windows machine. And what we recommend to our students and have installed in our labs is the free Dev C++ IDE. That stands for Integrated Development Environment. That's the place where you're going to be writing your C++ code. You're going to be compiling and building your programs. You're going to be running and testing your programs there, so it's pretty important. Now, it's not the only IDE in the world. Some people really like the Microsoft Visual Studio IDE, for example. My students that have Apple machines, they're usually using Xcode, which is a free download for that system. So if you do have another ID that you prefer, of course, you can do this work in whatever you like. You will have to learn that ID on your own. Me personally, I do really like DevC++. So when you see me working on examples in these lectures, that's what you'll see me using. And as we go through these lectures, at the end of every section, there's gonna be a slide that outlines homework assignments and laboratory exercises. So obviously, if you're a student registered in one of my courses, that material is required. And that gives you a heads up on the next homework assignment and the next series of lab exercises that we'll be doing in our in-person sessions. But even if you're not one of my students, I would recommend that you look at that anyway. And that gives you some good opportunities for practice for your own study. The homework assignments are all directly out of the textbook. So there's no reason why you can't just do them on your own. And let's talk a little bit more about that textbook. So I align my courses pretty closely with the book that we use. And for this series, we have a book that I really like a lot. It's by Tony Gaddis. It's called Starting Out with C++ from Control Structures Through Objects. And we can look at that title a little bit more closely. At CUNY, we do teach this material as a two semester sequence. The first semester is basically the control structures part. That's all the basic stuff that pretty much any programming language is gonna have. Uh, it's basic data and variables, input and output, making decisions, doing repetitions efficiently. That's what we mean by control structures. And in that first semester, you're basically finding out what's gonna be in any kind of language, including C or C++ or Java or C Sharp or Python or things like that. So you're kind of getting a nice package there. Now, in the second semester, we get into what's called object-oriented programming, which is a bunch of features to support larger projects and larger teams in big industry or big businesses, which is something that C++ is really good at. Uh, the book also comes with a lot of nice instructor materials, which are extras. There are downloads for all of the code examples that are in the book. There's a lab manual that's gonna guide us in our exercises there. So I make that available to all my students on our learning management system. If you had an, I have another instructor where that's available, I encourage you to uh, make use of that. Even if you don't have that, it's not totally necessary. As long as you have a copy of the textbook, I'm sure you're gonna be able to follow along with the work that we're doing. Uh, the lecture slides that I'm gonna be presenting, I have heavily adapted from the original ones that come with the book. So in some places I've made them more brief, in some places I've added some things that I think are important. I've added animations in order to demonstrate things in certain places. So it's very much customized to how I think things are important and how I would present things in an in-person class. And I make those slides available at my CUNY Academic Commons site. So there should be a link in the YouTube description to that. Whether you're one of my students or not, I would encourage you to go there 
download those slides and you can use those to guide your own study. Okay, so I think that's basically what you need to know to get started with this sequence. And as we go forward, I really hope that you find this material to be as interesting and enriching and empowering as I have personally found C++ to be in my own life. So I hope you have a good experience and good luck.